Good morning, good evening, and welcome to World of Warships. My name is Robin, and today we review the third episode of the Nostalgia's Grind, this time featuring the tier 6 Faragut. But first of all, thank you very much for tuning in the video. I really appreciate it, and I hope you will enjoy your time here. Are you guys enjoying the series so far? Because I am having a ton of fun playing, editing and commenting these episodes. So let's keep at it and without further ado, review the details of the ship we are about to sail in. Sitting at tier 6 in our branch, Faragut is the first draft of what to expect in terms of firepower for the rest of the branch. She's equipped with the now classic 127mm guns in a 5x1 configuration. Torpedo-wise, slight upgrade in range, speed and damage. We embark 8 of them in a 2x4 setup, 6.4km of range at 64 knots. Faragut only has 11,500 points of health, a slight downgrade from the Nicholas. Her anti-air defense system is rated 20. Similar to Nicholas, the 127mm are a big part of the setup. Her surface detection, with my command build at least, is in horrible 7.3km and the armor thickness goes from 6 to 21mm. For the module 11 installed, we have main armament modification 1, propulsion modification 1, aiming system modification 1 and propulsion modification 2. For my commander, preventive maintenance, last stand and basic firing training. Faragut is an interesting design on this branch. You embark one of the best gun system for a destroyer at this tier, but suffer from poor concealment and still a rather limiting torpedo system. What does that translate playstyle wise? Well, we are about to see. Let's take the Faragut to battle. And here we are on the map Trident Domination Mode. We got ourselves a southeast spawn in direct range of C, so that is where I'll be fighting on early game. Now, here is the deal with this ship. After you've experienced the efficiency of the Clemson and the potential of the Nicholas, the game decides that you need to readapt to something a bit more rough to use. In one chair, you lose concealment, maximum hit points, number of torpedoes, but on the other hand, you gain one additional turret, slightly more range on your main battery, slight buff in their reload time, faster torpedoes with a slightly more increased range, but you still cannot stealth fire them, even with concealment expert. So it feels like the ship is asking you to rely on your guns the more you progress, and entices you to start keeping your distance from your targets as well. We are still pushing the cab first line, but we are sailing as close to an island as possible to be able to get cover quickly if things start heating up. Once again, this time with full tier 5 and 6 matchmaking, we have two aircraft carriers per team. And my friendly Ryujo is going to spot the entire sea flank for me, allowing me to safely enter Charlie. If there's anything I have against the CV rework, the spotting potential is definitely one of them. It gives you too much intel early game. Destroyers are not able to approach caps without getting noticed. I already know that I'll be facing a Fujin, since enemy Gaide and Aigle are spotted over Bravo by the CVs as well. So I can just comfortably smoke here and start firing on targets. The Fujin is going to keep popping in and out of concealment. She's coming in to contest the cap, which is good objective play on her side, but she also got massively delayed by the CV spot, and I was even able to engage her and land some damage. As you can see, with the basic firing training skill, my reload is only 3.6 seconds, which starts to be very competitive. Shells are still floaty, and the aiming always gets some getting used to at medium to long ranges, but when you land hits on lightly armored targets, like this Galissonnière, for example, the damage really follows. Oops, torpedoes coming in from the Fujin, but we anticipated and angled away already. Look at the output, just look at the output. The French cruiser is actually kind of melting, with the combined fire of my teammates, of course. But in that short period of time, we've already dealt 10,000 points of damage on her. My torpedoes seemed to have scared the Fujin away, and we are able to solo secure the cap. 
And look, I'll land a citadel there, and the French cruiser does not last very long after that. I still have 45 seconds on my smoke, so plenty of time to sustain fire on the New Mexico. Plenty more HC shatters, of course, but we are setting him ablaze here and there. I love this to say that Farragut guns are strong at this tier. You want to use them as often as you can. And that's the main trait from now on for the entire rest of the branch and oh, Fujin is plain spotted again. I of course instantly switch to her, knock out her engine and secure the kill in a couple of well-placed salvos. Now, I decided to get out of my smoke because I wasn't expecting to kill the Fujin that fast and I wanted to keep her spotted, so I found myself completely exposed to New Mexico. Although, now destroyers are even stronger against battleships, since large caliber AP shells will only deal minimal damage on them, over pens, that is. It allows for much more aggressive plays, like the one I'm doing right now, without the huge risk of losing a large amount of HP. The US battleship does not have a lot of room to maneuver either, so it is a good opportunity for me to ambush him with torpedoes. And oh well, he doesn't even seem to be too bothered by the threat I pose. He also accidentally dodges one of my set, but the second set is underway towards him. He is in a full turn and will not be able to evade and we secure our second frag. Flank is almost clear. We only have an enemy Leander who managed to break through the other side, but she has to deal with our cruisers first. Except for the Nicholas and Gaida division, not a single enemy ship is defending their rear and we can easily flank. Flank and guess what? Go CV hunting once again. I do not think most of the players realize how vulnerable CVs can be if not protected. For two episodes now, I've been able to flank my way to CVs, and this one is not going to be different. The enemy destroyers could very well realize the threat and try to hunt me down, but nope, it seems that I'm completely free of my movements. So far, our team is doing quite okay. We have a strong point lead and control two out of three caps. We also do have a couple of ship advantage. So there is no demand for me to play the objective anymore as long as my friendlies can hold their grounds. Couple of shots here towards the Gaide over the island. If she decides to pick a fight with me, I'd have to rely on damaging her as soon as possible. Unfortunately, no hits, but it seems that the German destroyer isn't interested on engaging me. We are still pushing towards the likely position of enemy CVs, and the Ranger is going to be spotted steaming away. Shortly after, I also have vision on the Ryujo, and she is just free food for our guns. Unlike the Hermes from the previous episode, our 127mm can easily penetrate her deck, so we do not really need to close in for torpedoes. We most likely will have to sustain a bit of damage from our incoming squadrons, but I'm doing quite okay HP-wise, and I can still take a bit of a beating. On the other side of this flank though, enemy Leander was left free to push our carriers. We might be looting them both also, but it just goes to show that at least at lower tiers, the life of a CV is quite precarious. Yeah, this CV is so weakly armored that we are even able to reach her citadel with high explosives. I am keeping a course that might allow me to catch up the ranger shortly after I deal with Ryujo. I do have to sail a long way to get in range, but we still have plenty of time for that. I'm starting to work on the Ryuji's broadside, so I quickly decide to swap to AP and test the damage, and yep, every single salvo lands a citadel, and we are quickly able to deal with the Japanese Kyre. Third frag of the game. We're already up to a hundred thousand points of damage dealt, vast majority done by guns, and Ranger, I am coming for you. Speed boost is active, but the US CV is definitely going to force me to sail all the way to the edges of the map. That's the price for a kill, I guess, but Ranger is very fast and we are barely catching up with him. Plus, even though we still have full advantage of points and caps, we are never safe from an enemy comeback, as we experienced in the previous episodes. 
Minor evasion from the Rangers' torpedo planes, the American CV instantly recalls the squadron and I will have to expect rocket planes and dive bombers quite soon. Enemy Leander managed to take out our Ryujo, and shortly after we also lose our Konigsberg. Just like that, the enemy team has rebalanced to kill counter. We achieved high caliber already, so far so good, and I am doing a mistake right now of not focusing my anti-air. We've only shot down 9 planes so far, we need to better the Nicholas. I am quite relying on my team not to screw this one up. I'm starting to sail really far away from the action, but at this point I am too committed to turn back. And I'm also having too much fun. As you can see, the gun angles are quite alright on this ship, you are able to bear all your firepower quite comfortably. It does help a lot, especially with night fights against other destroyers, even though there wasn't any displayed on this episode. Ranger planes are still striking, but for minimal damage most of the time. I'm trying to stay parallel to the rocket planes and perpendicular to the dive bombers and minimize my profile, while our guns are not really doing any significant damage. Deja vu, right? At least we now got him cornered and he cannot sail away from us anymore. I just want to get into torpedo range and drop them all to ensure a kill before I start sailing back towards Alpha and Bravo. I hope you don't mind me speeding up the footage a bit, nothing really interesting to dwell on. But now that we got the Ranger stationary and broadsided, it's time for her to suffer the fate of our contemporary Ryujo. AP loaded and after a couple of M adjustment we reach the Citadel and hmm, this feels really good just blasting CVs like this. Well worth the effort. And we finish off the target with our torpedoes. Job done. Both CVs are dead. And now here I am sitting on 4 kills and almost 150k damage dealt. Not so bad for a tier 6. We do have a strong lead on point, but our friendly Leander gets taken out, and it's now a 3 versus 2. Also, our remaining CV is facing the Guider, and I expect her to fall, so I need to sail back and link up with Fuso if I do not want to leave him unprotected. Ranger's planes are still overhead. The last squadron was trying to line up a drop, but it's basically over for him. I am so far from the action, let me just speed this up once again. After a prolonged fight with the Guider, our Ryujo does fall, and the enemy Leander is probably going to go for the Charlie Cap. Now we just need to find the Guider in the short period of time we have left. Our team will definitely win by points, that's for sure, so why not try the infamous gun bait once again, see if Gaide falls for it this time. Did not work on the previous episode, but we might get lucky today. And yep, she actually does fall for it, very low HP as well. She basically gives us our Kraken on a silver plate. Oh, and by the way, sorry if I had to uh, blur out the chat here, but some players were extremely salty in chat and no one really needs to read that. The German destroyers try to smoke up and conceal, but it's a bit too late for that. We are able to land enough shells on target to secure the kill and close down this game in a victory. 147,000 points of damage dealt around 8,000 XP earned and an evil number of credits gained. We achieved Confederate at the last second actually, Kraken Unleashed and High Caliber. Landed only 3 torpedoes, 333 shells with 16 citadels, solo to base, shot down 18 aircrafts and sunk 5 ships. Very decent base XP and overall decent damage dealt to the targets we engaged, both CVs of course being the source of the vast majority of our total damage. I hope this review was a proper example of a successful fight with a far from being aced Faragut. Well people, this video is coming to an end. Thank you very much for watching it all the way through. I hope you've enjoyed the episode, and if you did, give it a thumbs up. If you did not, thumbs down, but stay tuned anyway. 
As always, there is more content to come about World of Warships and the next episode is coming quite soon. So, until next time, you have a good one and you take it easy.